So here we have the lollipop, tasty lollipop from God's Box, which is a FET or Vactral based compressor. Plenty of control, some CV, dry wet blend for New York style or parallel compression. Let's check out a bit of what's to come and some of the patches before we get into it. So Lollipop is a FET or Vactral based compressor with all the kind of controls you'd expect and see on studio units. So up top we have the threshold control and the switch to select the FET or Vactral based modes. And there's this nice warm orange LED bar for gain reduction. We've then got input gain, attack, release, output gain, dry wet blend, ratio, our actual inputs and outputs, side chain input with little level control, and also a threshold CV with level control. Taking that out of this cable spaghetti and into the system where it's infinitely more useful, let's get into it. Before we get into the patches, I just wanted a quick kind of primer on what compression is. We start with the threshold, which is the top knob on the lollipop, and this sets the point at which the compression starts to work. Moving on to the ratio, this sets the gain reduction. So if we cross this threshold and say we have a ratio of four to one, every four dB that goes above that threshold will be reduced down to one dB. So eight dBs above that level would give us two dB. If we had a ratio of two dB to one, every two dBs would give us one dB. So if 10 dBs went above it, you'd only get five. The attack is how quickly that compression occurs. A sound has passed the threshold and it's going to reduce the gain depending on that ratio. The attack is how quick that happens from very quick and snappy couple of milliseconds up to longer times that let more of the sound through before the compression reacts. The release time is then how quickly, once the sound's not above that threshold, how quickly it releases that gain reduction. So with high attack and release times, you can have a lot of the initial sound come through, a lot of gain reduction, and then a slow release back up to normal volume. Or super snappy, fast, responsive compression as well. The dry wet blend allows you to do New York style compression, where you can get heavy, maybe too much compression, but then blend some of that dry signal back in to bring your transients back, give you a nice big kind of fat sound. That's a quick primer on compression. Let's get into the patches. So this is the patch that we're going to work towards in this segment of the video. Let's just have a quick listen. Grab some headphones or crank up some studio monitors. There's this kind of modulated sucking around that's affecting this delay trail in the background. Okay, so we'll lose the delay. I'm gonna take this fully dry, turn off the modulation. And here's the mix that's coming in. Because we've got the dry wet blend, I can completely get this dry and isolate the compression or get rid of it out of the mix altogether. So here's the dry input beat. A little bit of noise and some reverb in the background. Just making sure that there's something dynamic but also with a kind of lot of depth and texture to it for this compressor to rag around. So backing things off, here's the compression. We're now fully wet. And as I drop the threshold, we're getting this gain reduction dependent on the ratio that we set. Now for things like mastering and mixing or kind of bus style compression you'd find on a mixer, it's often quite nice to have a low ratio, but also a very low threshold. So the whole thing is sign compression, with just a couple of dBs just to kind of glue everything together. 
To show you the effect though, I'm going to go much more drastic here and crank up the ratio, which is pretty much nearly a hard limiter at this point. And the attack is how quickly it responds. Release is how quickly it comes out of this compression. So say it's just ducked this by 10 dB, it's how fast does it go back up. You can see in here it responds differently. Now as I bring up the attack time, it's going to let more of that transient, that initial kind of pop or sound that made the compressor react through because it hasn't attacked quick enough. Notice that kick and snare there. The kind of transient comes through before the compression sucks it down. And notice the difference in tone between the FET and the opto modes. The opto being the Vactral. So this is FET. Nice thing having a dry wet is we can set this kind of heavy compression and bring some of that dry back in. This is often known as New York style compression, which is a parallel dry wet blend of heavy compression against the dry input signal. But in practice, we can really push this, get a lot of weight and snap to it. Just way too much. But against that dry, it just adds such thickness without completely killing it because that dry signal is still coming through. With this as compressed as I can pretty much get it, let's add some sample and hold to the threshold. And that's what I was doing in this patch using a random sample and hold that's playing 16th notes in this pattern into threshold. Randomly kind of ragging around this compression. It's nice to get these interesting rhythmic results kind of sucking the beat around. Adding a little delay that I've got after the compression. We get these nice dub style trails because depending on what the compressor's doing, the delay is going to react differently downstream. Whereas if this is dry, it's just the same amount of delay all the time. And of course, bring a bit of that dry back in. We've got an interesting modulated, lively kind of beat. So here we're going to take a look at sidechain, and there's two elements to this patch. First, this drum beat, which is entirely secondary to the lollipop. And then this droning oscillator, which is going through the lollipop. And I want to sidechain that against the kick drum. So I've split off my bass drum module, and that's coming into this sidechain input that has a level control. And between the attack release, obviously the ratio and threshold and the actual level of that side chain, we can really get some different responses from this. It works really well for that typical side chaining, be it subtle or dance style pumping a bass drum against a bass sound or a bass sound against a bass drum. So with both of them playing, I'm going to turn up the level of this side chain. can get more subtle just kind of nudging of that bass out of the way when the kick hits I'll drive it a bit more and get it really ducking out of the way and fading back in now the release will control how quickly this comes back in And it just gives it this really lazy feel with that long release. 
again, slightly different response between the Vactral and the FET modes. And you can play around with the compression settings. The attack is how quickly it will respond. But when you're ducking against the kick in this kind of quite heavy handed electronic music kind of way, you probably want a fast attack to get it right out of the way to let that kick punch through the mix. Now if I change the length of the bass drum to really long, all this kind of flabby low end from the kick pushes through while keeping the compression down. If I really tighten it up so it's short, the compressor is reacting a little bit faster. It's reactive to that side chain input. Now in patches like this, it's also responded really well when I've just put a trigger in there, just some voltage to kind of spike the side chain rather than the audio source. And then it's completely shapeable in its response on the attack and release. Let's just have a quick play around before moving on and I'm going to modulate the actual bass oscillator coming into the compression. So in this patch we're going to explore how to use a compressor and obviously in this case the lollipop to get big cavernous big reverb and delay effects and we all love bathing in a big reverby bath but then everything's kind of drowning in reverb. But a really nice trick is to split your dry sound and your wet sound. So I have my dry sound going into my mixer to record entirely separate to the kind of compression chain here. I'm then splitting my sound into this reverb next to Lollipop, into the compressor, and then that's going to my mixer being blended to create my own dry wet and being recorded. Simple enough so far. But the trick here is to split the dry sound and use that to sidechain the effects signal against kind of itself. So the wet sound goes into the lollipop. This is reverbing. If I make this fully dry, in terms of compression dry, and lose the dry sound on my mixer, this is what's coming into lollipop. Just reverb. Now the dry sound, this one, is being split into the sidechain input. So what happens is the reverb ducks against the dry sound, meaning even when we've got this huge cavernous, big lush reverb, it's gonna get out of the way and let the kind of snap and excitement of the dry sound through. Without it, Kind of a washy reverb soup, it's a bit too full on. And again, with the level and all the other settings, we can really get a nice responsive side chain. And it doesn't have to be so obvious. We can back it off and be more subtle, but still let this dry sound kind of pop through this big reverb or of course really push it as an effect. It's a great production tip, doing it very subtly works very well in terms of producing music. Doing it heavy handed is a nice effect. It's something to consider, get your effects through a compressor, lollipop, side chain them against the dry sound. Now this works evenly well with say a delay, so just move in a couple of cables. Here's a delay into the compression. And then when it's wet. Let's get the dry sound back in. It just means that dry sound pokes through. Again, if this was no compression, no side chain, it's just a bit messy. This kind of ducking delay effect means we can have more delay with 
without it getting in the way. Say so we're going to look at distortion and abusing the lollipop. Abusing the lollipop sounds really weird. <laughs> Here's a low-pitched triangle wave coming in. It's a little bit quiet because I've had to leave some headroom in the recording, kind of smashing the gain on this thing. So have a listen. I'm fully dry. Let's just play around with the input and output gain and see what kind of distortion we can get. Now there's a kind of nice front end to that compressor if you like in the way that it's saturating. Let's get some kind of pulsing action on this triangle wave. There we go. Again, a little quiet because I'm going to then push these levels up. And we're still fully dry. So losing this pulsing for now. Let's check out abusing the compression as well. So there's a different tone going fully wet and really slamming the compression with a lot of input gain. We enter this more kind of hard clipped state. And again, some differences in tonal response from the FET and the Vactral modes. So again, let's get this input pulsing. We could make this dynamic by adding some sample and hold to the threshold modulation. So we're getting varying responses from that compression, giving us these different sucking, push-pull like effects and different saturation as well. Again, some already compressed drums. We've got a really nice thick bass line. And that noise level that's come up with that full output gain, just pulling up the kind of noise in the signal, Works really well in this context too. It kind of fills those gaps with this kind of sucky, ducking compression-like effect. So here we're going to look at just shaping kind of raw tones on their own. Here's a snare drum, just been re-triggered by a random gate. So let's just quickly check out compressing it to reshape the kind of transient moulding of the actual snare. So again, fairly large ratio, low threshold, aiming for quite a lot of compression just to check out the attack and release times and how it responds. And for those maybe new to compression, that attack time there is much more obvious on this example, where you can hear how much of the kind of front end of each snare hit comes through. Fast release. And that faster release gives a sense of really smashing the kind of front of the note, but letting the kind of noise in the tail end seem louder. It's almost like a sustainer effect on something like an SPL transient designer. Because the compression's released before the actual kind of noise has fizzled out. Once it's just sine compression, it's just quieter. So here I'm using a Telecaster guitar as an input into a simple input module and coming in for this compression. We're going to start with a kind of really compressed funk kind of thing. A lot of heavy compression, really kind of pulling out the attack and bringing this guitar really kind of forward in the mix. If it was a mix and not just a guitar. Let's check it out. <laughs> Now 
and you can hear it's kind of really slamming this up forward. If I back the compression off and play kind of nice softer chords, we could just have some soft compression kind of bringing out the instrument, evening out the dynamics in the playing. <laughs> Now just to kind of show how responsive this is, I've frozen a little bit of the guitar in clouds or the U-burst and I'm just going to play over the top. So to finish on, I thought I'd just compress a full mix and just have one last kind of play around, doing a few things a bit more subtly, which are always hard to demo, and of course, that bit more extreme as well. So this is fully wet, let's take it dry. Here's what's coming in. Drums, lead, bass, and some effects. Now, we'll go extreme, so you can kind of hear the compression immediately, and then I'll back it off to a more subtle, suitable setting for actually kind of compressing and mixing and recording it. Now dropping this to a lower ratio. giving us a more subtle, just a few dB of gain reduction, kind of gluing all this mix together. Now if I was going to commit to this and record it, I might go that bit more extreme and blend some of the dry back in, so let's do that. You can hear that compression just kind of pumping around a little bit now, bringing in some of the dry. just works as a real nice thickener for the mix and I'd be quite happy to commit to that with it backed off or fully wet. With a lower ratio. So thanks for checking out this video on the Lollipop from God's Box. Go check out the video on Loose Fruit, a fantastic wave shaper from God's Box. And also check out the Humpback filter from God's Box. It's a little favorite of mine, the late HP SEM style filter, multi-mode filter too. Hit like, subscribe, go support me on Patreon if you wish, leave a comment. Cheers for watching.